Hello and welcome to TTV New with some latest event across the country in Indian Province. Ladies and gentlemen, on the morning of October 26, 2024, Indian Province, the Bagnan Provincial Committee for the Advancements of Women hosted a meeting with female leaders managed by the Provincial Party Standing Committee. Attending in the event regarding the bargaining leadership, there were Mr. Nguyen Anh Tuấn, Provincial Party Secretary and Heads of Provincial National Assembly Delegation, Mr. Vương Quốc Tuấn, Deputy Party Secretary and Chairman of Provincial People Committee, Ms. Trần Thị Hằng, Standing Vice Chairwoman of Provincial People Council. From the Indian leadership, there were Provincial Party Secretary and Chairman of Provincial People Council Nguyễn Thanh Tâm, Standing Deputy Party Secretary and Heads of Provincial National Assembly Delegation Phạm Hùng Thái, and Deputy Party Secretary and Chairman of Provincial People Committee Nguyễn Thanh Ngọc. During the meeting, the Provincial Party Secretary and Heads of Parkland National Assembly Delegation, Nguyễn Anh Tuấn, is read her frail rectitude for contribution made by feeder leaders, made by female leaders to the development of Parkland and Dinan provinces. He extended wishes for continued health and success to these leaders, encouraging them to proceed in contributing the skill and intellect to the development of both provinces. Secretary Nguyen Tung also expressed thanks to the provincial leadership, local department, and Sunroof for supporting the Bakhnin delegation meaningful trip, further strengthening the solidarity between the two provinces. At the meeting, participants enjoyed traditional performance, including Mubong Roy, Jadam Drum Dance, and Southern Vietnamese folk songs. On the morning of October 26, Mr. Yung Van Thang, Deputy Chairman of the Indian Provincial People Committee, attended the conference on promoting and connecting banks with businesses in the province, organized by Vietnam Joy Stock Commercial Bank for Industry and Trade. At the conference, Mr. Nguyen Xuân Hien, Director of the State Bank of the Indian Branch, provided business with information on supported measures including the interest price reduction and the debt restructuring to maintain the loan classifications, disbursement of preferential credit packages, and low interest new loans, and implementation of government and state banks' preferential credit programs. Mr. Yu Vang Thang, Deputy Chairman of the Nguyen Provincial Appeals Committee, emphasized the need for the banking system in the province to continue with self and healthy development, effectively contributing to the local economic and the social growth. Firstly, we hope that the non-vitting bank in particular and the commercial banks in general will continue spending preferential credit programs especially for the small and medium-sized enterprises and startup projects and high potential development sectors also. Secondly, we encourage banks to promote digital transformation to facilitate the business access to funding. The Bank Business Connection Program has increased the proactivity and shared responsibility of commercial banks to support their customers through different days and promoting the safe and effective credit investment. The year 2024 marked a period where Tenen has implemented multiple strategies to try breakthrough and achieve the goal of five-year social economic development plan for 2021 to 2025. With determined leadership, combined effort of entire political system, the business community and citizen, the social economic situation in Tenen has saw positive changes across most sectors in over the past nine months. In the first nine months, the GRDP rose reached 7.86%, exceeding an annual target of 7%. Leading the role were industrial and construction sector at 11.13%, followed by trade and services at 6.95%, agriculture, forestry, and fishery at 3.36%. And rather tax minus subsidy would rise by 3.34% year over year. The industrial and construction sectors contributed to the most overall growth, accounting for 4.76 percent point. Comparing each quarter, GDP saw robust grow up 8.60 percent in the third quarters of the year, which slowed to 7.68 percent in the second quarter and 7.42 percent in the third quarter. 
regarding economic structure over these nine months, the industrial and construction sector had a higher share at 46.2% of GDP compared to other regions, then ranked 21st nationwide in economic growth and second in the southern region. In October 25th, the Ministry of Public Security held a conference to reveal the progress of the project to establish reserve mobile palace units within provincial and municipal palace departments nationwide. Major General Wing of Tan Delta Commander of the Mobile Palace Command presided over the conference. The conference was broadcast online to police departments across the provinces and serving Gowan City. At the Tenen Provincial Police Department, the Colonel Trang Vang Luang, the director of the Tenen Provincial Police, attended the event. Since the establishment of the Tenen Provincial Reserve Mobile Police Recommend, the command then effectively advised the party committee and provincial police board on training for tactical drills and real-life scenario exercises for officers and soldiers, and the recommend is well equipped with the weapons, support tools, and technical devices to facilitate the training operations and combat readiness. The Tenant Provincial Reserve Mobile Police recommend has been mobilized seven times to ensure the security and order in various situations. In addition to this core mission of firmly safeguarding national border sovereignty and security, the border guard posts under the Tinan Border Guard Common are actively engaged in the self-sustaining production to enhance the material and spiritual well-being of their future and soldier. At the Nam International Border Gate Station, located in remote area far from residential center, has sustained in production play a crucial role in ensuring regular logistic and supporting daily operations. Thanks to Everland, the Nam International, the Nam International Border Gate Station has favorable conditions for growing vegetable year-round and raising livestock. This uh, efficiency in fast food has significantly improved the quality of daily meal for the soldier. We have installed a focused self-sustaining production model, including check fruit or banana orchard, a fish bone and a, and a ricket farm, providing abundant resources for the unit. This is skill steady supply for fresh vegetable, livestock, poultry, fish and various fruit for the social muse. At Van Dengdao Border Guard Station, initiative has also highlighted the reactive and reactive mobilization of local resources to improve social life through gardening and livestock rearing around station. Currently, most units along border are self-sufficient in vegetable and are actively involved in production to enhance living standards for the troops. We have focused on self-sustaining production around kitchen, garden and base. Even at remote posts, we have implemented a structured lane with designated area for livestock and gardening, upholding a spirit of self-efficiency that provides rest revenue for social and remote border posts. To build reduction efficiency, border guard units have assigned a feature to oversee and select rubs suitable for each season and climate. Additionally, poultry such as chicken and duck are raised that they are supposed to provide egg, contributing to improve nutrition for fisher and soldier. We use spare time to improve life for the soldier by cultivating land for reduction, growing greenery around the station and raise pig, chicken and duck to provide egg and meat, ensuring the health of our personnel to fulfill the duties. The Air Force of Tang Nam International Border Gate and Vam Tang Tao Border Guard Station in self-sustaining production have contributed to the better meal, improved living condition and stronger health for the soldier, forming the foundation for fulfilling the missions of securely protecting border life and landmark and reserving national border security. In recent years, Tunin has consistently promoted tourism through various means, showcasing the land, people, specialty, and potential of the province. And Tunin has actively participated in numerous small promotional programs to introduce the province and its peoples to neighboring the city and provinces. In collaboration with the Sunbrook, Tunin organized a farm trip to Hanoi to Tunin, and additionally, 
The province co-hosted the Binfuk to Tainan One Route to Destination program, attracting over 1,000 tourists to Tainan, and another farm trip title with One Route Three Destinations welcomed over 50 travel companies from Ho Chi Minh City, Bình Dương, Đồng Nai, Binfuk, and Tainan. And Tainan has also hosted the fam and press trips with nearly 50 travel companies from across the country for serving the tourism connections and expanding promotion efforts. Ladies and gentlemen, on October 26, 2024, in Tengheng Commute in Jiao District, the Nankasta Arba Club had a third meeting. The event was attended by Mr. Nguyen Dinh Xuân, Director of the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, and Mr. La Hong Nghi, Chairman of the Nankasta Provincia Cooperative Alliance. The Costa Arbor Club intends itself as the platform for members to interact, share, and learn from each other, facilitating access to agricultural information for Costa Arbor Rower. During this third meeting, discussion include the issue of Costa Arbor Fab and measure to prevent it. The section also focus on the scientific workshop theme, biological management by Millie Buff and Thief on Costa Arbor Tree. Dr. Trần Thị Mỹ Hạnh, head of the Land Protection Department at Southern Fruit Research Institute, presented on care and control of common diseases in cultured apple tree. On this occasion, the Mintrum Agricultural Services Cooperative at Southern Fruit Research Institute signed a memorandum of understanding, aiming to cooperate on technical consultation in seed selection, planting, and care practices. The agreement also covered the transfer of biological solution for managing pests and diseases in cultured apple tree in a common period. And ladies and gentlemen, on October 26th, 2024, at the headquarters of the Phuc Ninh Commune People's Community in Yuman Jiao District, the Ninh Provincial Police in coordination with the Ninh Provincial Women's Union, Yuman Jiao District People's Community and Ho Chi Minh City Volunteer Club, organized the 2024 Supporting Born and Women program. The program provided free medical examination treatments and medication to 1,000 women and their families members from Phuc Minh and Phuc Ninh communes in Minh Châu District. Additionally, 1,000 gift packages is valued for 120,000 Vietnam Dong were also distributed to patients who have participated in the medical checkups. As a part of this year's program, 15 disadvantaged women from Phuc Minh and Phuc Ninh communes received the interest free loans to 20 million Vietnamese Dong, each with one year term to help the support family economic development. The total budget for the program was 840 million Vietnam Dong, with 120 million Vietnam Dong source from the Big Bang Motto Initiative, which supports disadvantaged women and have the children attend school. Organized by the Tenant Province of Police Women Union, Ho Chi Minh City Volunteer Club contributes another 120 million Vietnamese dong, and the remaining funds provided by the local philanthropists. Ladies and gentlemen, the relocation of more than 30,000 children and students from the south to the north, along with the installment of the School for Southern Students in the north from 1952 to 1975, was a significant initiative. It represented not only a foresighted vision, but also a deep compassion of resident Ho Chi Minh, the party, the state, and northern people for the beloved children and family of southern soldiers. On the morning of October 26, the ceremony was held in Hanoi by the Southern Student Alliance Committee to commemorate the 17th anniversary of the installment of the School for Southern Students in the Northern Region. Attending the ceremony, there were political members, including Mr. Nguyen Trong Nghĩa, heads of the Central Propaganda Department, and Mr. Nguyen Hoa Bình, standing deputy prime minister. During the event, heads of the Central Propaganda Department, Nguyen Trong Nghĩa, highlighted the school for Southern students as a concrete example of the party and resident human foresight in training well-rounded leaders to build and protect the unified nation. Despite difficult circumstances, the NERF provided the best resources for over 32,000 Southern students. Teachers treated Southern students as their own, viewing their care and education as an honor, responsibility, and moral duty to support the Southern people in their fight for national independence.
To be who am I today, I am always grateful to Northern people and teachers who nurture our moral and academic development. In the southern school, we are cared for deeply, even in the party stricken area of Tanhua. After liberation, the people share what little they had. We still, we will never forget this kindness. After complete liberation of the South, most of these races returned to the South as a score force, playing a vital role in building and strengthening the revolutionary government. Many become the senior leaders of the party and state, scientists, educators, artists, and reputable business people, contributing significantly to society. While the Southern Student School System fulfilled its historical mission after national reunification, this unit educational model remains a symbol of the unwavering support for the Southern people. The Ministry of Finance has submitted a report to the National Assembly on the state budget revenue estimate. According to the report, budget revenue is estimated to exceed the aside target by over 10%. The state budget revenue target for 2024 was set at 1,700.99 trillion Vietnamese dong. In the first nine months of 2024, state budget revenue is estimated to have reached 1,448.2 trillion Vietnamese dong, achieving 85.1% of the target and representing a 17.9% increase compared to the same period in 2023. Based on the figure, the Ministry of Finance project that the total revenue for 2024 will reach 1,873.3 trillion Vietnamese dong, an increase of 10.1% over the National Assembly target and 6.8% higher than in 2023. In the remaining months of 2024, the Ministry of Finance plans to continue implementing fiscal, monetary and microeconomic policies to support businesses and citizens, control inflation, sustain growth momentum and maintain major economic balance. Ladies and gentlemen, Thu Thinh Hue is one of locality with many unique ecosystems, home to rain native and migratory bird species. During the bird migration season, the Robin has implemented various measures to protect wild birds and is actively researching and restoring bird sanitary areas. However, in recent, the situation of trapping, hunting, and trading of wild birds has recurred, especially during my recent season. Since late September 2024, the full of district forest protection force, in collaboration with the local authorities and the communes of Lộc An, Lộc Trí, Lộc Sơn, Lộc Vĩnh, and Lăng Cô Thao, has long inspection and crackdown efforts to dismantle and destroy illegal bird trapping equipment across the fields and wetlands along the Tam Giang Lagoon. The authorities has identified and removed thousands of fake stock decoys. Attesses, causes, takes, and nests, releasing the thousands of birds back into their natural habitat. We have been consistently educating and encouraging the residents, especially through the loudspeaker and the police travel groups with the village members, and thanks to these efforts and regular inspection by the authorities, awareness has improved and the bird hunting has decreased. However, some residents still engage in these activities due to economic hardship. From September to October each year, many bird species migrate to the south of Tam Giang Cầu Hai Lagoon and the Manfaro Forest and surrounding fields in search of food. And this period also sees the rise illegal hunting, trailing, and consumption of wild birds despite ongoing enforcement operations. Since the beginning of the year, Full of Forest Protection Forum has conducted 17 operations, removing over 21,000 fake stock decoys and artificial slick nests and traps and releasing for 255 white birds back into nature. In addition to mobile education efforts, we hold the awareness meetings with community groups and work with the local authorities to have restaurants, iteration locations where bird driving frequently occurs, stack women to stop these practices. The Thu Thinh Hue Province of Forest Protection Force continues to work with the local governments and associates in various districts and Hue City 
to intensify inspection and crackdown, dismantling and destroying tools unused for trapping, personalizing violation, and educating residents to join in protecting the world and migratory bird population also. And that's all for today's TTV News. Thank you for being with us and goodbye for now.